the business hub. Dave wasn't born in Knowsley, but had arrived as a child from Liverpool when his family relocated to the new neighbourhood. In his late forties, he was an active member of the local business community and a recognisable face for those who frequented the town centre. Alighting from the water-powered, carbon-neutral shuttle bus connecting Knowsley town centres, the high street opened up before him, tree-lined and cared for. He loved the architecture of the shops and buildings and felt blessed his own business was part of this cluster. It was early morning, and calm prevailed before employees and visitors arrived. He proceeded past the health and well-being hub before strolling past the library and media building. The older market, a sterile, featureless, uniform area devoid of character, had been reconstructed into a shopping area based on the market that used to exist almost a century ago and was then the heart of the community. Everybody used to know the shop owners. Bread, meat, clothing, fruit and veg, all on display to be bargained over. People met on market days. News, gossip and local happenings were discussed over a cup of tea. Of course, things happen differently today, but there was still an atmosphere that felt parochial relaxing and eclectic. There were lots of independent shops and the influx of immigrants to Merseyside had greatly benefited the town, with artisan goods, coffee shops, bakeries and cafes serving delicious food and recipes the people had brought with them from their homeland, a real browser's paradise. Good morning, Tom, he called out at his friend who was writing day's goodies on the outdoor chalkboard. The smell of freshly baked bread coming out of his small bakery was heavenly. Tom waved back, holding the chalk marker. Good morning, mates. I'll come see you shortly. The two of them used to have a quick coffee and chat in the morning at Dave's before work started. They had a genuine interest in the local market's well-being and often exchanged ideas and tips that could help their business stand out. The idea of introducing goods from countries that locals used to visit on their holiday emerged from such a discussion after one of Dave's trips to Italy. They have a new type of coffee there, and we all loved it, you know? Their experimentations didn't go unnoticed by customers. This was the starting point for a digital networking and peer mentoring program developed by the council that connected the local town centre business community with peers from tourist markets such as those of Spain, France, Greece and Turkey. Soon the village had become a regional destination for new products and experiences that reminded people of places they had visited. Dave arrived at his shop bearing his name in red lettering. His shop offered cool refreshments and snacks catering to the guests of the small, family-friendly park. This corner of the centre was forested, cool and calming. It contained an outdoor stage which, on warm summer nights, showed films and plays. On its other end started the path that led to Highton's garden allotments, where people grew their own fruit and veg. Any surplus was shared among the local community or bartered for other goods and services. This was the latest concept piloted by the local business community in partnership with local charities. With a tap on his watch, Dave opened the electric blind and entered his store that looked drowsy until he turned on the lights. Before starting the morning preparations, he performed his opening ritual. He stood at the door and watched early risers arriving at the village. He voicelessly expressed gratitude for one more day and wished for the fulfilment of the social, mental, emotional and spiritual needs of the townspeople, both old and young. A fictional story drafted by Dave and narrated by Simon Hall. Please click on the last picture of the dome and follow the link to take a short survey regarding some ideas presented in the story. Your opinion matters.